Hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. I'm Dr. Aisha. We are going to learn about fraud and NS management today. Stay tuned. We study about the code of business ethics and conduct that firms have to establish according to the Malaysian Code on Corporate Governance. Why firms need to have the code of conduct and ethics? One of the biggest aim of all of this code of conduct and ethics are primarily to mitigate conflict of interest that might eventually lead to fraud or earnings management activities. So now, we are going to learn about fraud and annex management activities that managers might engage in their daily business activities. I will divide my presentation into six main sections. The first one, I will discuss about fraud definition, key elements for fraud to occur, symptoms of fraud, annex management definition, motives of annex management as well as how annex management is performed by the managers. Fraud is the generic term and embraces all the multifarious means which human ingenuity can devise, which are resorted to by one individual to get an advantage over another by false representation. No definite and invariable rule can be laid down as general proposition in defining fraud, as it includes surprise, trickery, cunning, and unfair ways by which another is cheated. The only boundaries defining it are those which limit human knavery. Razai 2005 defined fraud as an attempt by corporation to deceive or mislead the users of the published financial statements, especially investors and creditors, by preparing and disseminating materially misstated financial statements. Fraud is the deception that include the following elements a representation about material point which is false and intentionally or recklessly so which is believed and acted upon by the victim to the victim's damage. Unintentional error is not a fraud. Someone mistakenly enters incorrect numbers in the financial statement this is not fraud. Someone purposely enters incorrect numbers on a financial statement to trick investors. This is fraud. Management fraud or financial statement fraud involves top management's deceptive manipulation on financial statements. Who commits fraud? Research shows that anyone can commit fraud. Most fraud perpetrators have profiles that look like those of the honest people. Key elements for fraud to occur perceive pressure, perceive opportunity, and rationalization. Perceived pressure includes financial pressures such as greed, living beyond one's means, high bills or personal debt, poor credits, personal financial losses, or unexpected financial needs. Vices include gambling, drugs, alcohol, and expensive extramarital relationships. Work-related pressures include getting little recognition for job performance, having a feeling of job dissatisfaction, fearing losing one's job, or being overlooked for a promotion. Other pressures include 
a spouse who insists to improve lifestyle and a challenge to beat the system. Perceived opportunity includes lack of controls that prevent and or detect fraudulent behavior, inability to judge quality of performance, failure to discipline fraud perpetrators, lack of access to information, ignorance, apathy, means lack of concern and incapacity, as well as lack of an audit trail. Those who involve in fraud keep rationalizing their crimes in their mind. The organization owes it to me. I will just do it once. I believe that other people are also doing the same. I'm only borrowing the money and I will pay it back. Nobody will get hurt out of this. I deserve more actually. It is for a good purpose. We will fix the books as soon as we get over this financial difficulty. Symptoms of frauds include accounting anomalies or abnormalities, internal control weaknesses, analytical anomalies, extravagant lifestyle, as well as unusual behavior. Accounting anomalies include irregularities in source documents or journal entries or ledgers, such as missing documents, alterations on documents, duplicate documents, document sequence that do not make sense, journal entries without supporting documents, journal entries that do not balance, unexplained adjustment to receivables, payables, revenue, or expenses. Internal control weaknesses include lack of segregation of duties, lack of physical safeguards, lack of independent checks, lack of proper authorization, lack of proper documents and records, overriding existing documents, as well as inadequate accounting system. Analytical fraud symptoms are procedures or relationships that are unusual or too realistic to be believable. Examples include unexplained inventory shortages or adjustments, deviations from specifications, increased scrap, excess purchases, physical abnormalities, excessive late charges, as well as excessive turnover of executives. Strange financial statements relationships, such as increased revenue with decreased receivables, increased revenue with decreased cash flows, increased inventory with decreased payables, increased volume with increased cost per unit, increased volume with decreased scrap, increased inventory with decreased warehousing costs. Fraud perpetrators often live beyond their means since their income does not support their lifestyle. Lifestyle changes are often easy fraud symptoms for co-workers, managers, and other employees to observe. This includes new cars or expensive cars, expensive toys, expensive houses, expensive jewelry or clothes, expensive vacation, expensive daily spending, for example, eat in expensive restaurant daily basis. Unusual behaviors include guilt, fear, stress, behavioral changes such as insomnia, increased drinking, taking drugs, inability to relax, unusual irritability and suspiciousness, lack of pleasure in things you usually enjoy, fear of getting caught. Inability to look people in eyes, showing embarrassment around friends, co-workers and family, defensiveness or argumentativeness, thinking of excuses and finding scapegoats, sweating, increased smoking, obsessively contemplating possible consequences. Earnings management occurs when managers use judgment in financial reporting in structuring transactions to alter financial reports to either mislead some stakeholders about the underlying performance of the company or to influence contractual outcomes that depends on the reported accounting numbers. Two forms of earnings management, that is, income increasing earnings management, 
and the second one is income decreasing earnings management. Motives of income increasing earnings management include to avoid reporting loss, to meet or beat the earnings forecast by the financial analysts, to increase board of director potential in receiving high bonus or compensation, to get the contract from the government or other firms, to increase the profit so it will eventually increase the share price. If managers hold the firm's share, increasing the share price will also increase their own wealth. High share price increase the reputation of the firms as well as the shareholders' wealth. Motives of income decreasing earnings management includes to avoid high taxes as well as to avoid paying high salary or bonus to the employees. How many just manage earnings? A choice from a menu of treatments that are acceptable under GAAP such as LIFO to FIFO, the full cost method versus successful effort methods in oil and gas industry, depreciation method from straight line to reducing balance method, revenue recognition policy manipulate the difference between revenue and cash flow that is true accruals. Earnings management is the manipulation of accounting rules within accounting standard boundaries. Fraud is the manipulation of financial accounting beyond the accounting standard boundaries. Both fraud and earnings management have bad implications to the firms and to the stakeholders. Large firms like this can easily collapse due to earnings management and fraud activities. Alright class, that's all for today. We are going to learn about corporate governance mechanism next week inshallah. I'll see you again. Have a nice day everyone. Bye-bye.